Okay, we're joined by one of the great friends of the show who actually made himself available at short notice. We're just saying off air that, yeah, you know, it's just amazing how many players just, ah, just a bit busy. Flat out, And mate. they're starting to yeah, flat out and out. buy secure environments. Yeah. Um, but not this man. This man has made himself available to he's talk got to the plenty great of time. because he, he does service to the community. And I'm talking about Pete Hanscom. <laughs> Pete, welcome back to the great cricketer. Oh, it's great, boys. You know, I'd drop anything just to be on this show. <laughs> so much sincerity. I love my little line. <laughs> Well, this is, there's so much to talk about, Pete, but it is, you know, BBL season, I guess. Uh, so let's start there. You know, the Hurricanes, as we go to where the Hurricanes are on a roll now, you know, Wadey's back. You've just pumped the sixes overnight. Uh, you dropped yourself, and we'll talk about that um, mid-game. You might storm into the semis or whatever they call it. Um, I mean, are you just, you know, absolutely bursting with excitement for what the Hurricanes might be able to achieve this year, or are you um, just pretty keen to get out of a biosecure uh, bubble? Yeah, bubble life's uh, a bit interesting, that's for sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, in terms of hurricanes, yeah, we've we're fine. And um, what Wadey brings when he so he's come back in, and I mean we saw it last night. He just comes out and he's lapping blokes with fine leg and third man back and um, hitting bombs. And and what what that does to Darcy up the other end is is huge. So. Yeah, hopefully we take that momentum into um, into some finals, but we've got one more game to to make sure we qualify first. Mm-hmm. Well, as it is cricket, let, let's let's harp on the negatives. Um, Peter, uh, it, it's <laughs> Peter. It, it's uh, it's interesting because obviously you previously with the Stars, um, and and it, it's a strange thing where they've had such a you know star-studded lineup. Pardon the pun, and they've still got there. They've still got Maxwell, Stoinis, yeah, Zampa, three yeah. of the best players in the competition. And they're going to struggle to make the finals this year. And obviously now you've moved to the Hurricanes, you know, and now that you're sort of outside the, you know, Stars bubble or hub or whatever it is, can, is there more broader perspective about why it hasn't worked out for the Stars so far in the, in the Big Bash? Oh, geez, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't, want to, I don't want to throw any of the boys under the bus, ah, but um, <laughs> some of my best mates in that team. But uh, no, it's, um, it is tough. It's such a weird format. T20 cricket, like you can be absolutely smoking it, but one guy from the other team can can just take it away from you. Um, but they're they're such a scary team, the Stars. I mean, we we were lucky to. I mean, we got one win against them, one loss, but Maxi was going against us in that first game, and you know just just got out at the right time for us. Um, and then the next game, we got absolutely Marcus Stoinist. Um, he come out and made no, no, no. 98 or 96 or something, and just smack them everywhere so they've got um they've got the firepower uh, and if they do make the finals they're going to be a scary scary team so they get in a roll it's it's dangerous but mm. yeah it just you know hasn't hasn't quite quite clicked for them yet but you know they're they're there thereabouts mm. just a question on the game last night against the Sixers again as we as we go to where so in the first innings for those listening overseas who, who don't follow every single big bash game um and that that's their loss yes. uh you guys were just on fire to kick off the game. It was um, it was it was the Darcy Short and Matthew Wade show. No wickets at ten overs, and with the X factor, you can change a player um, and bring someone in. Now you you've been the captain of the Hurricanes all season. Obviously, Wade's come in now, and um, and you've sort of subbed yourself out of the game. Now, I guess my question is like, as Short and Wade are pummeling boundaries during the first ten overs, like I just want to know honestly, like with each with each boundary, is your emotions becoming happier and more relaxed in the knowledge that you're out of the game or are you hoping they get out and like be honest is it you know because i would say for me you know because we're similar cricketers yeah. any opportunity to not play the game is met with a lot of like relaxation anxiety Relief. release yeah. you know oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we well, know when you wake up you? when you wake up on saturday morning and it's and it's raining and you you do that little cheer inside you're like yes they'll, they'll hmm. call this off by lunchtime and we can get to the pub um which is brilliant so yeah last night it got to about the the sixth or seventh over it's really the sixth over i was like wow weighty and, and shorty are going well here if they're none down by 10 i reckon i reckon the smart move here is probably just me out and bring in big uh big timmy david to try and hit some hit some sixes because he's got one hell of a swing on him um but i didn't want to say anything just yet because you know in cricket we're all superstitious and you don't want to move and you don't want to start predicting the future because then everything goes to shit. So um I waited until about the eighth over eight and a half. I was like, nah, we're pretty we're pretty safe here. Spoke to spoke to Griff. Um and I couldn't believe how quickly he jumped at it. I was like, oh 
bloody hell, mate. You know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a senior player, but at least give us, you know, I struck, struck him at 200 last game. At least give it a bit of thought. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, great, great idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll lock that in. Um, so, yeah, they went for it. I put the feet up, um, ran out the odd, the odd helmet or the odd drink a bit later and yeah. kicked the footy after the game. It was a no, beautiful, relaxing, relaxing day. What a day. Do you, do you still get, like, the same match payment? Yeah, beauty about Big Bash May is just contract, no match payments. So <laughs> happy days. <laughs> and as a cash up front, or, no. no. Um, uh, no. Now, ben, I want, I want to ask you about, I mean, how all over the season, all over the places this season been rather? Because obviously Victoria started like the Shield. It was like two weeks late. Then you guys couldn't train for a bit. Then you played a couple of games in Adelaide or, or because of COVID, obviously. And then there was like this extended BBL program in sort of in the idea was in the initial stages, I think because there might've been some um, lost games through, through COVID or whatever. Uh, so it's a long BBL season. I saw during the week that St. Kilda club team lost to Hawthorne who then had to sing the, sing the team song um, using a, uh, you know, song lyric sheet. Uh, Cause they had won so long and now there's bubbles. I mean, how's, how, how has your summer been? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a great recap. Um, <laughs> all over it, but yeah, it's been, it's been weird. Jeez. It's been weird. Like, um, yeah, that that Shield Hub in Adelaide was was tough for for different reasons for different teams. Um, you know, we had to do a quarantine going into the hub, um, so that was a relatively strict hotel quarantine with, you know, still still three to four hours out each day to train, which was which was awesome because you need to get out um, and just see some people. But um, so that was tough for us there. But then on the flip side, Adelaide had that little mini breakout just as we were leaving. So pretty much every other state except for Victoria had to quarantine when they went home. Mm. So rather than, you know, rather than them going home and being able to relax before what was going to be another tough big bash hub, they had to go home, quarantine for two weeks, and then go into into another hub um, where they've had, you know, minimal freedom as well. So yeah, it's been it's been a weird one. Um, even the internationals coming over as well, like they thought they were going to be able to get to train didn't happen um and, and we're seeing it with the tennis players at the moment as well like it is it is tough to to try and prepare yourself for sport if you're just sitting in a room um by yourself for two weeks there's only so much you can do yeah mm. yeah it's grim speaking of things being weird the, the test players have come back into the bbl setup now so with you guys that's wade and pain mm. so wade assumes a captaincy and then the test captain revert, re- reverts to reserve wicketkeeper. So does Tim Payne still manage to like alpha his way through the Hobart setup or now that he's a reserve, <laughs> like does his social capital diminish and just, can you just run us through some of the complexities there? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't believe the, um, yeah, no, he's still got, he's still got the alpha mm. alpha side of him. Um, mm. And the boys coming out of the woodwork as well. Like, Oh, Payne, let's, are you having breakfast? Oh yeah. I'll come down. I'll come down. Um, <laughs> Or like Payne just put a message on the group before he's going for a walk uh, just to go get a coffee or something. Um, about half the squad just jumped at it. So yeah. the boys, the boys aren't silly. You know, you want to get around the, you want to get around the alphas and, and make sure that, you know, you get under their wing and on their good side. So no, he's, he's come in beautifully. Um, I run the drinks still, you know, still done the, done the one percenters that you expect of, you know, it's, it's not just, um, do what I say, it's do what I do as well. So that was uh, that was pretty good. But no, they both they both come in, they both um, flying. And how was that walk you went on with Penny? Was it good? Yeah, it was great, mate. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I was right next to him. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's funny, Pete. Like um, like it feels like more than in recent memory. Uh, maybe maybe as a result of what's happened with the Aussies against India, like you know, the Australian public's found their inner national selector. You know, like every, <laughs> everyone has a view. Um, you made some comments recently defending Tim Payne, and um, just sort of wondering, like, like as a player, like how much public selection talk are you exposed to, or do you expose yourself to, um, and like what percentage of it is absolute dross? <laughs> So I made I made the mistake um, about two years ago when I was still playing Test cricket. I was on the fringe and I was listening to all the public the public opinion and pretty much all of it was like shit technique, get rid of him. Um, and so that that sucks. So I pretty much made a decision from there just to like 
I'm not I'm not listening to this. Like I know what's I know what's going on. I know what's happening in the um in the setup. Um, can't can't be bothered listening to to the public uh, public opinion. Um, but yeah, you can't. It is hard to shy away from it because you do see it and you hear you know other boys talk about it and they're like, oh, I can't believe people are saying this and rah rah. So you do you do pick up things, but no, I try I try my best to stay away from it. Mm. I mean, you talked there about a couple of years ago when, when you were playing that uh, in the last India home series. Um, that was the year when obviously Smith and Warner and Bancroft were all banned during that summer. I mean, can you describe what it's like to face, you know, Boomer, that sort of the wanger arm and the entire quality of the Indian tack generally? I mean, we've, we've hypothesized many times in this podcast about how the fuck you even see the ball coming out of his arm. Like, I mean, how, how do you face Boomer when he's like stuttering in, then just. <laughs> Uh, it's it's nuts. Boomer's just he's next level, um, and something that you know no one's really seen in world cricket. Maybe Malinga, like although at least he kind of run him. Mm-hmm. Like Boomer's just walking in, and then he's got he's about two steps out, and he goes bang bang, and then it's just like a bowling machine. It just comes out at pace. Uh, so it's hard to it's hard to get cues. Mm. Um, because it seems like I mean he's got a good technique and he gets right over his front foot so he's getting his his pace through that but it, it seems like he's got a really really good wrist mm. so the cue between his bouncer and his yorker and his slow ball is so minimal that you're just kind of hoping that you hit the ball and it, it doesn't hit you on your pads or your stumps or your head yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just with these selection issues Pete like um so, you, so you've it feels to me like you're right at the center of a lot of these things because like you've obviously selected yourself out of a game last night. <laughs> um, you got Wade usurping pain, and then back at Victoria, there's a new generation coming through. Your skipper there, um, but many people on the internet and in the press want Maxie and Aaron Finch involved in the Red Bull stuff. That's the internet wants that. So, mm-hmm. like, fuck, there must be a lot of WhatsApp threads for various teams, and then secret <laughs> spin-off threads and stuff that you've got to be involved in. You wouldn't believe it. The, the amount of WhatsApp groups um, and you've got to be so careful. So, you, you know, when you're like typing something and then just before you hit send, you make sure that it's the right group, like, yeah. you know, oh, Victoria yeah. side group spinners only or something like, yeah, <laughs> make sure, make sure this isn't the sentence where I'm spraying the spinners for not getting a wicket or something like that. So yeah, you can't write um, it. Uh, got to be, you got to be careful boys. Everything's, everything's out there. Social media, you can't get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually texting um, Peter uh, Hatzigler before uh, mm. about you, but uh, that's actually yeah. I've been that several times <laughs> Pete beforehand. H. Peter, Peter H, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, Peter, uh, but you've obviously been in, um, you know, in Australian dressing rooms during some pretty, um, uh, pretty tough times where the public, as Peter said before, sort of bang for blood and that sort of thing. I mean, how do you think the Australian team would have been feeling at, at the end of day five? Just absolute despair, but also a bit of relief about, oh, I actually get to go and see my family now, you know, on Pat Cummins' farm. Or, mm. you know, is it, is it sort of um, acceptance that, uh, you know, India are the rising superpower? Which one of those two is it? Oh, um, well, I think there's a, there was a fair bit of, um, like, thank God that summer's over. Like, it's, mm. it was tough, but it was a tough bubble life. And um, obviously, the, the boys have been under the pump, um, you know, right from the get-go. As soon as something was wrong, the entire public was against them, which... It was a bit. It was massive shame because you know they're actually playing some pretty, hmm. pretty good cricket, and, and and you know some individual performances were were pretty amazing. Um, and to see the the public sort of go against um the boys was a uh, was disappointing. Um, whereas I feel like the focus probably should have been on how well the Indian cricket team actually played. Hmm. Well, let's be honest. They've come over here, tough conditions. They've had the same bubble life. They've they only had two blokes from the first team that from the first test that played in the last test yeah. and they still managed to beat Australia at the Gabba. Like that shows how good they are, the depth of cricket that they've got. They've got this amazing young, um, young group coming through. Um, yeah. So to see, see the public and see the, the, what they were writing um, or what I was being told that they were writing in the papers and stuff was, yeah, was shit really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were ready. Um, it, it's funny you say that, you know, as, as a, as a guy who's played in the middle order for Australia in the test team, your average 38.9. So we'll make that 40. Yeah. Uh, yeah definitely. Like, Always round up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it must be a part of you just with, with the, with the team kind of screaming out for a middle order bat or, or, or at least there being an opportunity for one. 
it must be, it must be frustrating to not have the opportunity at that point to stick your hand up, you know, and to go mm. it, it, by weight of runs, I mean, uh, and to go, you know, yeah. pick me. Yeah. 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 I mean, that was, that was a bit frustrating. I mean, we only, as you know, Victoria in the shield in the shield season, I only got to play um, two games, one of which the entire middle order sat down for pretty much the entire game um, because Puck and Harry were, were a bit uh, selfish there and decided to score all the runs themselves. So yeah. that leaves you, that leaves you one game to try and score some runs. And I um, also felt for uh, Nick Madison, who's been smacking him in the nets and, uh, any warm up game we had, he was, you know, he made 100 at, um, you know, when we played an intra club game. Uh, didn't get the opportunity again to push to push his case. And he's a guy that's played test cricket and he's probably ready to go now more though, more so than he was uh, before. Um, but yeah, it was just, just through this year and this weird year, we don't get the opportunity to do it. It's, it's one of the great, yeah. isn't it, where there's this. There's this moment where you turn up to the you turn up to the ground. You're having a bat first, and you think, mm, "Don't want to get in too early. New ball might nip around a bit." But in the context of like Park 25 runs, where every bloke scoring hundreds, Josh Inglis is going back to back. You know, Pekovsky's on 200. And that opening partnership, I imagine you're batting. You're you're waiting to bat, and the score's on 450 or whatever you're on. You thought, oh, "I wouldn't mind having a stick here, boys." Yeah, well, I'd normally been batting four for Victoria, um, but saw the wickets and saw what was happening. So I was like, no, 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 Puck, you can go up. I'll bat three. So I was like, oh, at least, <laughs> at least like shine should be off, but yeah. I still have a long, long enough time to bat and make some runs. Um, but that plan just didn't work, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> just, just broader than the cricket, Pete. Like, the, you know, it's been a lot of talk about your lid, you know, being different, your salad, if you will, depending on where, you, you know, your dialect. Sure. Um, yeah you know, your technique being different. I know Marcus Thornis um, spoke the other day about, you know, showing public affection to his friends. Some people think that's rare. Like mm-hmm. it seems to me like a lot of blokes are really comfortable in their own skin as human beings uh, in cricket these days. I just wondered if that worried you in terms of chances of selection. <laughs> as in what, like I don't have a good enough rig to get selected. Is that? Oh, just, or, you or know, it looks, it looks, I'm, using- I'm not used to it. You know, I'm not draping myself in the Aussie flag with a short back and sides, you know, diggers stuff, like just keeping it really on the yep. straight and narrow. Does, mm. does that, does that concern you? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, you don't, you, you don't want to be too weird or too rare because if you are, then mate, you know, might, yeah, it might hurt your chances at selection. Um, so Stoyne's, Stoyne's rare. He has that, he has that side of him, but he also has a rig, so he's he's a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, I, I feel like I was a nice person, but maybe I just had to do something different with the hair. So I thought yeah. maybe that might, that might get me noticed and therefore selected. Uh, good point. Um, but no, it, it, it wasn't to be, but the, I've, I've had some good, good feedback. Most, most positive, some negative. Well, most of the time, when I've seen it on TV, it's obviously tied back. But now I look at it, now you're relaxed, uh, you know, in, the, mm. in your confines. And there's a bit of um, sort of Bernard Fanning about it. There's a bit of sort of 90s grunge mm. era. Is that what, like, you know, is that yeah. 90s Australian sort of rock? Hell uh, jam almost. Yeah. Is, are you going for that yeah. or is it just a, a nice offshoot? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. He's, he's not a bad looking rooster. I can't, I can't sing like him. Um, I've done karaoke once or twice and... Poor people had to listen to that. Um, no, I apologise, but yeah, it, it was one laziness from last year with the with the uh, with the hair. Um, you know, hairdressers being closed, um, and there was no way I was letting my wife touch my hair either um, <laughs> with, with the clippers. So I was like, yeah, let's just go it out, see what the hell happens, and loving uh, loving being able to get a ponytail yeah. go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, last last one for me, Pete. I mean. Um, you're obviously playing last time Australia went to South Africa in a, in a fairly benign series where nothing happens. Um, you, reckon, you reckon the boys are pretty keen to get back there? Yeah, I reckon they're gonna uh, they're gonna love it, mate. They'll be um, <laughs> it, well, at least there probably won't be a crowd. So at least, yeah, 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 that's good. At least they're not gonna cop too much shit. But um, yeah, I can imagine there'll be a few scars there. But uh, the boys will be fine. They'll they'll suck it up and just get the job done. Yeah, I see. You're going to go down the path there of having a joke and then you're like, nah, they've got to do it. Yeah. Then that's fair enough. They're going to win 3-0. Bring it, bring it back, yeah. That's going to win 3-0. <laughs> um, Pete, thanks so much for joining us at short notice. I'm sure you enjoyed that and that's what you needed with your day. Um, and all, all, all the best for uh, with Hobart and the rest of the summer and hopefully get out of the, the, the bubble and get a bit of a break as well. Uh, cheers, boys. Absolutely loved it.